Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? This is our lab in which we will find the moment of inertia of the lawnmower wheel. Now, the setup that you're seeing in front of you includes a lawnmower wheel and a hanger band. Here is the lawnmower wheel. Here is the hanger mess down here. Underneath is the motion detector. Let me first show you the details of the lawnmower wheel. I have an identical lawnmower wheel right here. Look at it directly in front and then from the side. The string is wound around the lawnmower wheel. Therefore, the first number that you should consider is the radius at which the string is located relative to the center. Well, when I take a meter stick and measure it all across, I get 10.6 centimeters. Of course, that's something that I can show you if I had a meter stick. And uh, let me just show you with a meter stick one more. So as you can see here, I can measure the lawnmower wheel across and ends up that I was a little off all the way across from side to side. It's 11.1 centimeters. But remember that the outer radius, the inner radius is from, I moved it from the inner lip to an inner lip, and that's almost exactly 10 centimeters. We'll use 10 centimeters. I did multiple uh, measurements. It is 10 centimeters. So that will be our radius of importance. We will talk about that some more when I'll show you some theory. But take data, write it down. 10 centimeters for the diameter, therefore 5 centimeters or 0 0.05 meters for the radius of the lawnmower wheel. The mass of the lawnmower wheel, which I measured on scales, is 0.3424. And I'm not going to show that to you because we aren't going to use that mass at all. Try and think why that is. That's a good thing to consider in your discussion. So how are we going to measure the moment of inertia in order to do that? If you recall from our last class, what we can do is we can find out the acceleration, the angular acceleration, the tension, and from those I can find what the moment of inertia is. Notice that, of course, the string moved a little bit to the side. As I was winding the string a little bit and therefore I'm just hanging this object right there and I'm going to let it fall. This is the lowest mass and it is five grams. And notice like the case of the spring that you have to kind of think about that. Think about this one five grams for the hanger. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually run the experiment. And then I'm going to zoom in on the screen. So I'm just going to let it go right now. And I'm going to actually going to do it twice because, first of all, to let you see that I really got results that make some sense, I'm going to show it without reversing the, without reversing, if you recall from your lower pro days in the lab, 
you can kind of reverse the direction. I did not reverse the direction right here. And let me zoom in on what actually happened in the first two seconds. And you can see when we're looking at velocity of the object versus time, I get a data point here. And my data point will be the slope of this graph. I can highlight this right here and find the slope fairly easily. Remember, we would like now to go to curve fit rather than just like uh, use the automatic version. And I'm going to also zoom in some more. And you can see that there is a good fit here for the acceleration. So we can see the acceleration. So I'm gonna do the first data point and then I'm gonna change the right direction. We'll do the second data point. And by the third, fourth, fifth, fifth sixth, etc., I'm not gonna zoom and show you each and every data point, but your team should remember this data point. It's going to be 0.2443 meter per second square. And I'm also going to be, be saving it. And this time around, I'm going to save as there's not going to be one for each team, but rather I'm going to send them to you guys without fits. You will have to fit it. Now, notice that I fitted all the data I could possibly fit. And I'll be even more fastidious about that. We do not throw data points unless there is absolute justification. Right here, I have a good fit. If you're saying I need to throw the last couple points because they don't look so uh, splendid, that's not acceptable. So I have the first data point, save as. Moi one for moment of inertia. And that's going to be, of course, posted on your canvas page. Next, as preparation for the next data, I'm going to reverse the direction of the sensor. And this time around, as I said, I'm going to give you the data. I'm not going to show you what the data will give, but rather I'm going to repeat the experiment. What you should write down, remember the first hanging mass was 5 gram. The next hanging mass is going to be 24, 10 grams. So let's do that. I'm hanging an additional five gram on the five gram. And I'm collecting again.
So remember, it's 10 grams. I'm showing you the graph for this one just because I reversed it, but I'm not going to fit anything. So again, you can see that from here to here, you can find a slope. Obviously, it's the reverse of the previous one just because I did reverse direction so that we can see a nice slope of velocity versus time being the acceleration. So that's going to be called Moi 2. And now we're going with the next few, and I'm going to do them in an assembly line type stuff. Next one I'm doing 15. Fifteen grams for a hanging mass. That's more three. Next, I'm going to do 20 grams. You may see that I'm adding those uh, slotted, not slotted, but they are masses with a little hole in them. The next one is 20 grams. It's going to be more four. Next, I'm going to do twenty five grams. Twenty-five grams is saved as point five. Next thirty grams. going to be saved and placed on canvas is more six. And I'll go a little bit further for the next one. Meaning I'm adding an additional 20 grams, so that makes it instead of 30, it's 50. And that's going to be our last data point.
Okay, just so that you see that, except for this going crazy right here, that we actually got data right there. Here is our data. And I'm going to save this one as MOI7. Now comes the theory part. For starters, let me show you a diagram. So right here, I have the diagram of our lawnmower wheel and on it, a mass hanging. That's the mass that we're gonna measure and we're gonna measure the acceleration of that mass. Now, if I do a rigid body diagram, that's gonna be the torque is the radius. And notice that I didn't do the radius all the way out. That's the five centimeters or 0 0.05 meters. And the tension, that's gonna torque the wheel. But we didn't measure the tension directly. The way we found out the tension is through a free body diagram with Newton's second law. So let's look at the free body diagram for the lower case M. We can write for Newton's laws, that F1 plus F2 plus etc. It was mass times acceleration. In this particular case, we know that F1 is Ft in the j hat direction, F2 is mg in the negative j hat direction, it was ma in the negative j hat direction. From which take the j out, out factor out the j's. So we have here Ft minus Mg equals minus Ma, or Ft, the tension, is equal to Mg minus Ma. Wonderful. And remember that this tension is a Newton third law pair of this tension that's in the rigid body diagram. Now back to the rigid body diagram, where we can write Newton's second law as torque one plus torque two, etc., equals I times alpha. The way this is written here, I can write it as the radius R times F sub T, which is the tension, times sine of 90, which is just one. As you can see, 90 degrees between the radius and the hanging mass. I'm not discarding the possibility that there are some other torques equals I alpha. I'm going to use this in a graph to find I. In principle, I could just divide by alpha and get I, but I don't want to do it. There is a good reason why I shouldn't be doing this. Let me write this underneath the graph that I have to the right here, which will make it a little easier to see. Here's the graph that I have. graph. And let me just write underneath the graph. Let's see if we can see enough of it. Let's move. Camera is a little bit here. So let me write again this torque one plus torque two, etc. equals I alpha. And our first torque was just R tension times 
times sine of 90. And I've just left this here equals I alpha 12. I can find the tension fairly easily. That's right here. That's mg minus ma multiplied by the radius. That's easy. Okay. But now I'm going to find that torque one here. And that's really important because that torque one may not be the only torque. Think about it for a moment. We always had some other stuff going on. Unlike 2AG, where we're trying to see the, the general idea, here we are taking into account thermal velocity, friction, uh, losses, all those kind of things. So think about it for a moment and then, hey, there could be a torque counteracting that rotational thing that's called frictional torque. Therefore, I'm going to write this. It follows the frictional torque. Think again about this thing. That's how tension works in this way. This is R, so that torque tries to spin the wheel this way. Therefore, the frictional torque will be in the opposite direction. Therefore, I can rewrite this as R F T sine theta equals I alpha plus frictional torque. Which means that if this is my y equals slope times my x plus y intercept. As a result, you take my data and you put it in. You find your r1 times m1g minus m1a one that gives you first data point, second data point, etc. And hopefully, once you graph everything, the slope will give you the moment of inertia. And the y-intercept will give you the frictional torque. Now, for the purpose of this lab, that is not physics, but mathematical, what we're learning here is how to milk information from a graph. Now, once you do get the fit, make sure that you go very carefully and make sure that you have high precision. If you do line fit on Excel, it's Kind of tricky you need to have more decimals so play around and have it with more decimals on logger pro it's a little bit quicker notice that your alpha of course is just a over the radius or a over 0 0.05 meter and that's your x-axis y-axis that's it that's the line 